Now, I request Dr. V. Subha Bharti, Director, SRM Group of Institutes. Few people have taken a more unlikely course in life. Born in Tirunal Valley, Tamil Nadu, to well-off parents, Dr. Bharti has reared alongside his three siblings, and as a result, his persona constantly demonstrates collaboration, charity, practically, and realism. The principles his parents established in him. Along with his natural optimism inspired, Dr. Bharti dedicated his life to providing every student, regardless of back background, the same chance his parents gave him. Dr. Bharti moved to Chennai after finishing his education. Presently, director of SRM Group of Institutions, Ramapuram, Chennai. His 35 years of teaching experience redefined his conviction in the potential of ordinary people coming together. He served on various boards and has written and presented numerous papers, national and international conferences. A widely traveled person and a national awardee. Because of his strong interest in research and academia, he earned the reputation with a go-to man with realistic knowledge. His leadership brought a stronger scientific ecosystem and a more equitable opportunity and never say die attitude in the face of adversity and change. He believes in charity and holds a vision of serving the underprivileged section of society. To turn his vision into reality, Dr. Swamprava Satpati awarded the honorary chair for Swamprava Foundation International His vision and leadership helped the organization to be more secure at home and more respected around the world. I now request Dr. V. Subha Bharti, sir, to present. Sir, please. Am I audible? Yes, yes sir, you sir. are. Yes. Uh, is it possible to give the option for screen sharing, Akar, sir? Sir, I have already transferred the hosting right to you, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening to all at the outset. I thank uh, Dr. Swayam Prabha, ma'am, for giving this opportunity. I'm very happy to be part of this first international conference on humanities and social sciences. Uh, incidentally, uh, I'm the odd man out in this conference because I belong to a different domain, engineering and technology. However, I have a great interest in social sciences, especially uh, many of my projects are in the domain of archaeology, where uh, I do projects like technology intervention in archaeology. So that is my interest. Uh, today, I would like to share only one thought on this particular conference. Uh, permit me to share my screen. Few minutes only. I'll take. Screen is visible, Akarshat? Yes, sir, it is yes, visible. Yes, yes. So I would like to insist only one thing, creativity and intelligence. No matter what, how diligently we paint, practice music, ponder science or write literature, will never be Picasso or Bach, Einstein or Shakespeare that we know very well. So this interaction between left brain and right brain, but only few are genius, few evolve as genius. So uh, it is almost 3.4 billion years the human civilization evolved. So the right from Stone Age to the present era of Industry 4.0, it is a very long journey. But our ancestors who invented the stone tools, they have never imagined that 
that will take the civilization to the present day. It is not possible for them to imagine. But then, because of this civilization, technology advancement, today we are in the era of artificial intelligence. The K work, which is the form of the creativity, now resulted in the great artists like Picasso or Rembrandt or so many artists have come. Even now, the abstract art, it is still giving momentum. But in this journey, uh, we reached a point where technology now plays a role. The civilization evolved because of man-to-nature interaction and man-to-man -man interaction. But later, the man-to-machine interaction is playing a vital role now. How this man-to-machine interaction will lead to us to the future, that is questionable. In 1962, in Bell Labs, a plotter has incidentally created a random, part, random pattern. It is very abstract in nature. They called it as a computer art. So this is the this is the output of the plotter. Today, if you look at it, is not lines, but it looks like an abstract art. This is a computer art generated in 1962. But presently, you look at these three paintings, people who are having some kind of knowledge on paintings, they will be able to identify the first one is the style clearly reveals that it is a painting of Vincent Van Gogh. And the second one is Turner, third one is Edward Munch. But these paintings are not actually painted by the respective artist, but these images were generated by artificial intelligence. And the, if you look at all the three paintings, same place, same place, but it is painted in three different strokes. These strokes are very unique to the particular artists. How it is being done is artificial intelligence, when fed with a lot of input, then it learns and then tries to mimic or tries to create or generate similar ones. So all the three paintings are, are of the same place, but with a different strokes. The strokes are master strokes, but it was possible for AI to create such paintings. Museums. Now the museums are totally digital in nature. Digital museums, we know very well, but there are metaverse museums where you can be visiting that, you can visit that museum as an avatar. So you can be inside the museum, you can interact with the objects that it will give a very real life experience through augmented reality and virtual reality. Those are all now possible things. So the first metaverse museum already got released. So this is a link with which you can visit the museum as an avatar. And this, this, this picture shows a museum of the future in Dubai. Museum of the future in Dubai where you can visit now, where you can get the real life experience of the imagery created with virtual reality. And the structure is like a Taurus with a ellipse inside, a wide ellipse, which reveals the structure of the earth. The calligraphy over the structure, there are three sentences. One is this, the secret of the renewal of life, the development of civilization, and the progress of humanity is in one word, which is innovation. So, which is a famous quote by a Sufi saint, which is in calligraphy form in Dubai. If possible, I can show the uh,
system is slow. So, uh, museums are totally now in a different uh, light. So, Metaverse Museum is a technological wonder so where we can enter as an avatar and experience with other actors. So, uh, many people will be inside the Metaverse Auditorium uh, Museum as avatars. So, you can have a lot of interaction with each other. The next is music. When Beethoven died in 1827, he left fragments for a 10th symphony. It is not complete. So Beethoven could not complete his 10th symphony. Now technology has attempted to extract art from artificial intelligence. Now it is a project, Beethoven 10, the AI project where they, they fed the artificial intelligence with the complete work of Beethoven and artificial intelligence is now able to complete the 10th symphony. And it is already available in the uh, web. So you can listen to Beethoven 10th symphony, even though he is not available, he could not complete the 10th symphony, but artificial intelligence was able to complete it. So we think that music is a very good art form uh, which cannot be done by a machine, but they made it possible now. Not only that, I hope you are aware that this book is available in Amazon. You can purchase, which was released in this March, 105 poems by Chat GPT. Author is a mission. I hope you know about Chat GPT. Chat, it is a uh, Open AI is a company which released uh, Chat GPT four. It is a conversational AI. It is a bot. It is a machine which is able to assimilate all the information available in the web, and then it can do your task. If you ask Chat GPT to write a poem, it will write. If you visit in India. For a five-day visit, if you ask Chat GPT to plan, then for all the five days, it will give an itinerary. If you ask Chat GPT to write a program, computer program, it will be able to write a program. The wonder is, it is writing poetry. We think that poetry is the highest form of literature, but a machine is writing poetry. So this is how the technology is moving. Intelligence and creativity meets at a point now. We think that it is a left brain, right brain, but it meets at a point which is genius and the genius is now technology now. This is one of the sample poetry written by Chat GPT. Left side is a poetry written by Chat GPT. Right side is the poetry written by Dylan Thomas. But the form is very similar. If you read, I don't find much difference. The trees sway gently as the breeze drifts nigh. Birds fly home to their cosy feathered bed. The sun sets slowly in the western sky. A machine writes this poetry. So creativity, intelligence, all these things are now, whatever notions we have, which are all totally changed. But then where it will lead to? What is the future ahead? People are a little bit worried that artificial super intelligence, which will lead to a technological singularity. Singularity is a point where there will be extinction. But we don't think so. But then this, the pervasive technology will embrace social sciences also. And this computational social science is already in place. So I hope this conference will take up the impact of technology on social science and humanities. So that is going to be the future. My appeal to all the researchers here is 
let us break the conventional path and then look forward to see the impact of technology in social sciences and humanities. I hope this conference will take up many such articles for deliberations and I'm sure that the participants will have a lot of takeaway at the end of the conference. All the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your moving words. Thank you, Agar, sir.